Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John LaPook, medical correspondent for the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric, and welcome to CBSDoc.com. Today we're talking about a subject that's been all over the news lately, medical marijuana. Namely, should it be allowed? We brought in two experts on both sides of the issue to break down the debate, but first we hit the streets to see what you had to say. Are you Dr. LaPook? I'm Dr. LaPook. Is it harmful to you? If it were um, legal, how would it be distributed? What is it actually used for? Are there alternatives? Are you going to give us free weed? <laughs> <laughs> you both from Norway? Yes. What would you bet me that I would know or would not know the Norwegian national anthem? I'll bet my entire fortune on that. Yeah, the dead, tell I did dead not expect that. What questions do you have about medical marijuana? I guess what are the parameters? Like, what do you have to do to qualify for it? What kind of is appropriate? I'd be curious to know about addiction issues. As young people growing up, we sort of knew the evils of marijuana. What were the evils of marijuana? Oh, I wouldn't about? know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. What are some of the uses of medical marijuana? Medical marijuana is great for muscle spasm, arthritis, pain, weight loss, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, and a host of disorders. What is your stance? Where do you stand? I'd like to see everyone who is ill have the opportunity to use this medicine. So you think that medical marijuana should be legalized? Absolutely. Is that how you see it? No. I'm a scientist and a healer. I treat patients, but I also do research and I have to be guided by the data. This is a medicine with a 5,000 year history that goes back to ancient China that's been used for these same uses for so long with literally no negative consequences. How could we possibly hold this back given all the data we have? Is that true, Doc? I'm going to interrupt. Is that true? There are literally no negative con Absolutely consequences? Absolutely not. That's an absurd what? statement without meaning to be disrespectful. But there's increasing evidence that uh, marijuana, for example, uh, brings on psychosis earlier. The more you use uh, marijuana as an adolescent, the more likely you are to have a uh, psychotic episode. There are other problems in terms of memory, in terms of cognition, in terms of learning. I want to do a little bit of a, a point counterpoint or a joint counterjoint between the two of you. And what about problems from chronic marijuana smoking and lung disease? There's no link with uh, lung cancer or emphysema. The coughing and wheezing and tightness in the chest, respiratory complications seem to be sidestepped with the cannabis vaporizer. I haven't heard that uh, all these marijuana smokers are suddenly rushing out to uh, use a vaporizer. Marijuana use decreases serum testosterone levels, sperm count and sperm motility can lead to all sorts of problems with libido and in women it can cause shorter menstrual cycles and also changes with their hormones. What do you say to that? The hormonal impact is relatively minor compared to a lot of drugs that are already used and it's reversible so that even a small period of abstinence can tend to return things back to normal. Uh, it doesn't last but uh, to say that doesn't uh, take away from the fact that something is going on by the drug causing that and if an individual uses it over years that is going to have an effect on many things. Remember marijuana is fat soluble and so it's stored in the testicles and other organs in the body so it's around for a long time. One of the things I hear is that um, whatever you feel about marijuana use, one of the problems is it's a gateway. It leads to, to further addiction and use of more powerful drugs. Many of us who've seen the data feel it's very, very clear uh, both in human studies and in animal studies that it is a gateway drug to more potent uh, drugs such as uh, opioids and uh, stimulants. I, I feel like the gateway is overstated and if you just look at our own data, 100 million people have tried marijuana. Where are all the heroin addicts? How do you regulate it? I love the idea of using it just like any other pharmaceutical. Which means what? Go to the drugstore, pick it up, have your prescription there, and away you go. Uh, what would you pick up in that pharmacy? So uh, you, you 3 percent, 6 percent, 12 percent, 20 percent? I think the uh, opportunity to have stronger potencies so that you have to smoke less and use it in the vaporizer so there are fewer respiratory symptoms is a, is a great one. The higher the potency, the quicker the intoxication, and I think the more likely you are uh, to become dependent on it. We haven't even talked about marijuana addiction. It used to be felt that you didn't get addicted to marijuana. Uh, I get calls every week about people who can't stop using marijuana. There is a marijuana withdrawal syndrome. It took a long time to identify this withdrawal syndrome and it's in all honesty comparable to some of the ones we see with coffee. So I don't want to make too big of a deal out of it, but yes, there definitely is a, a diagnosis of dependence. How about the pill form that's legalized already? Uh, the pill form is legal for uh, two or three things. Uh, nausea and vomiting of chemotherapy, uh, AIDS wasting, 
and also for certain kinds of neuropathic pain. I'm happy that dronabinol, the marijuana pill, is available, but it's only one substance, THC. Marijuana contains over 60 different cannabinoids, and we're finding that in combination, these are a lot more effective than just the one by itself. Also, dronabinol is a pill. You have to swallow it, you have to digest it. People with nausea and vomiting aren't good at swallowing pills. And the debate goes on. Thanks so much to Dr. Earlywine and Dr. Kleber for joining us. Of course, we've only just scratched the surface on this subject, so please go to cbsdoc.com for a lot more resources and information on the medical marijuana debate. And we want to know what you think. Leave a comment or email us at doc at cbs.com. Next week, we're talking about male sexual dysfunction. You can email your questions now or go to cbsdoc.com to send in video questions. We definitely want to hear from you. I'm Dr. John LaPook. Thanks for joining us.